welcome to Felix Stone TV. Here we are in the ongoing story of This Is Your Life with Young Eric. <laughs> Today is actually Good Friday, so you've been given quite a treat, really. Um, the, at no gr well, great expense, uh, our support staff make up in all the production <laughs> crew are here, the service support crew are here. And obviously the editing and production <laughs> crew are here. Uh, welcome, welcome Eric welcome. and Bella. Uh, lovely to see you again. Yep. And I think we ended up um, at the end of the last looking to, in, in your case, to increase your support staff. And I had a feeling you weren't Dutch. Yes. Now, first of all, before we start, yes, yes. I've brought along a photograph of the Priory yes, because yes. I think ah. it's a good thing for people to see the size of our undertaking. Because well, if we, it's, uh, right, if we've got the camera back, and let's just, walk, we've probably got a bit of a light bit. Let's hold it there. Uh, I've got a bit of reflection. But can you see the size of that building? Uh, and that was the Priory. This is a uh, Christmas Christmas greetings from all of those who are there. So Eric should be able to look at this and see just how big the family was at that particular time. We think it was the early 60s. So all of you living in Arundel, that's how it used to look. So there we go, Eric. <laughs> Good. There well, it is. You can have a look at Good. these faces and give us a better date as to what was then happening. But um, you'd already done the refurb with help from the Monsieur. From, um, well, well, well li li a very little financial aid, a very little. We, we did it by sheer hard work. Hard work That's yeah. what it boils right, down yeah. to. Right. But the thing is, we've got to remember, although it was a huge house, there were 70 rooms in it, yeah. um, it we were just a big family, mm -hmm. and we were an ordinary family, and I think that perhaps we even had less trouble with a big family like that than people have with one or two children, because if the children fall out, uh, in a small family, it's a major occurrence. For everybody. But yeah. if, if our family, if the child f fell out with another child, they just went to another group. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was very easy. Almost but, like a political party. But it was a marvellous family. We had a lovely time. Mm -hmm. We bought a house in Bognor, so as a holiday house. It was right by the coast on oh the sea. Right. So uh -huh. we, were, we were able to take the children regular holidays, have proper holidays, oh and right. not, not the enormous family, but we'd take a few at a time, and because we were a big family, yeah, but yeah. we were a lovely family. Uh -huh. And over the years, they went to all the different schools, they went swimming. If they had hobbies like riding or music, we used to encourage it, or dancing, and they used mm. to have lessons. And they really did, you know, they enjoyed it, we enjoyed it, and we were very lucky to have such a big family. This you is really are. what it boils did, down did to. Did you get much sort of support from um, the Duke of Norfolk and his family, or, or not? Or well, were you just a well, I had, I had, I met the Duchess on one occasion yes. going up to London on the train, oh, right. and she <laughs> said, "I don't know what to do with one of my daughters, Lady Jane," and I said, "Well, send her and give her, give us a hand." Oh, really? And so she came and helped us for a bit. Did she? Oh, yes. They were a lovely family, the Norfolk mm. family. Mm. And um, as I told you, the Duchess was one of the Guinness girls. Yes, yes. And, um, and the poor, poor Duke, you know, he was very hurt by the fact that his family, um, the succession didn't go down to his girls. No. And so he built the park house in the grounds mm. of Arundel Castle. Mm. And um, so he was able to move out of the castle. So when he died, his family were able to continue there. there. But they were a lovely family, and uh, I can't speak highly enough of them. So how did, you, how did you sort of latch on to a property in, Bourne, in uh, Bognor? Well, no, we don't, we're not coming to the property in Bognor yet, oh, right. um, because I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the uh, priory yes. and schools and what, how the children right. coped with it. Mm. You see, we had an enormous uh, house, but it enabled us, even though we had a large family, for every child either to have a room to him or herself mm. or to share a room, right. which was brilliant. Mm. And so they had a completely normal upbringing in an abnormal sort of way, yes. but it was fun. Breakfast and, and must have been fun. Well, this is the whole thing. We operated purely as a family, right. and um, what we did, my wife was incredible, really, how she coped with mm. such a family. She, her right hand was a, a, a young girl 
called Brenda Ferrier. She came to us at the age of 21, oh. and she stayed all for many years with us. Right. And she was what marvellous. And Brenda and my wife sort of did everything. They right. got the children dressed, they got them up and what's it. But um, obviously they weren't enough to, to cope. No. So we fortunately had some Dutch friends, oh. and they told us, well, there's a lot of Dutch girls who want to come over to England mm. uh, to learn English. Oh, and the they had their au pair type mm. of thing. Ah. So we started uh, with Dutch au pairs, and they became part of the family as well. Mm. And mm. Uh, in fact, um, when at my wife's funeral um, last year, mm. uh, some of the uh, Dutch, our Dutch family came over oh, to, right. to see, see us, and uh, we were still daddy and mummy <laughs> to, to, to them all, which I think mm. is lovely. Mm. So everybody, we were mummy and daddy to everybody, it was a normal family, mm. and you know, they, they got up to their uh, bits of nonsense uh, as they grew up. They had their boyfriends and girlfriends and all right. that involved the teenagers, mm. and um, but it was it was a good time, and I think the children enjoyed it. They had a lovely upbringing, mm. and they had a good time. We had a good time, so it was a joy right. altogether. Now I think I told you, I've always been interested in youngsters, mm. and so obviously we've got very much the same situation today as we had in the sixties, because the youth clubs weren't providing what the youngsters wanted. Oh, the youngsters know. wanted loud music, mm. uh, stimulation, uh, activities, <laughs> and but the youth clubs were just providing them with table tennis and chess and darts. And so it's pretty much right, I'm afraid. And this, we're yeah. very similar situation today. Mm. So I started in, in the big hall at Arundel Priory. You can see it's yep. it, today. I think I was telling you last time it's a theatre today, so you can know the size of the hall. I must go and look at it. You must go Next and time go, 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 go to a show there, and you'll yes, you'll, you'll see it. Exactly. But. Um, we started this youth club there, and it was a tremendous success mm. because the youngsters, this is what they wanted. We, we, we had our meetings, but always the main part of it was uh, dancing, right. uh, and this is what they wanted. And, um, so who provided the music? Themselves well, or no, or we, 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 or? we either had records mm -hmm. or we used to have uh, you know, the beat groups in. Uh -huh. And yeah. this was the day when they were all starting up. Yes, and right. it was I incredible, really. Yeah. And just to show you the difference in the times, if we had a special dance, mm -hmm. um, the cost of a beat group for an evening's playing oh, right. um, was 15 pounds. Yes. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, and they, they'd come in. And it was, it was fascinating to see how some groups would come in uh -huh. and they'd have no equipment and the, everybody loved them and they were a tremendous success. People were clapping them and cheering oh, and, you know, singing yeah. along with them. And others would come in with mountains all of equipment and yeah. all the kit and the, the youngsters didn't like them. It's very strange. Isn't that odd? Yeah. But because our youth club was so successful, mm. The Bogner Council, and Bogner, our nearest seaside place was Littlehampton, yes. but further along the coast was Bogner, and of course Bogner, the council, they saw that how successful this youth club w was. Right. And they came to me and they said, well, um, w would you please uh, think about opening a youth club in Bogner for us? Because they had the mods and the rockers, and they had a lot of troubles with this. You yes, had no idea the problems right. were. And I said, well, if you give me some premises, <laughs> I'm happy to right. do it. And so to cut a long story short, they, they, they had five hotels along the seafront, because right. you remember this was after the war, buildings had been commandeered yes, and what have you. Mm. And the, in these five buildings were butlins, the butlin staff, oh, because right. there's butlins at Bogner. Yes, well, there must be. <laughs> it's, it's fascinating to think of this, what I'm going to tell you next, mm. because um, they said, well, we could give you these five. So they turfed the Butlins people out. Really? And um, I think they had their own chalets and things oh, by absolutely. then. I think this is when they first started. They needed somewhere for their right. people, but then they built up their site. They've got a marvelous site, yes, Butlins yeah. in Bogner. Mm. But so there they presented me with five hotels mm. on the seafront at Bogner and right. said, there you are, that, that use those as premises for your, your well, youth club. Much big enough. And I, I looked at them, all semi-derelict, or, you know, pretty tatty. Right. And I thought, what on earth am I going to do with this lot? Mm. And then I thought, well, let the youngsters do it themselves. 
So we formulated the idea of having the Caribbean Hotel, mm -hmm. and this was going to have uh, 70 boys and 70 girls to stay for holidays. All right. The, this we were trying to attract the yeah. mods and rockers and all, all the people, you know, the, 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 the uh, how shall I say, the people who were causing the bother. We wanted them to come to us for holidays. And um, so I thought, how are we going to pay for all of this? Big, and so what I did, I recruited a whole crowd of youngsters. All oh, right. And these were teenagers. Yes. And I said, well, we're going to uh, do this, these five buildings up mm. and make something of them. Right. And they all thought, well, it's a good idea. And um, so we all got to work with it. Mm. And you've no idea how good they were. And mm. in fact, uh, Mike Reed, you know, the disc jockey, oh, you yes. probably know him. He was one of my youngsters. Was he? Was uh, he good as a painter? Oh, he was brilliant as a painter. He, 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 I was the first person to put him on television. <laughs> but at any rate, to cut a long story short, and of course there wasn't such thing as building controls in those no, days and no. uh, planning permissions and what's it. So the first thing we had to do was to knock through the uh, hotel so they all intercommunicated. Ah, right, yes. And I shall never forget, we knocked through with a sledgehammer. I was, I was with a sledgehammer well, knocking this wall down. What to about supporting? Well... The whole lot started to collapse well, on us, do. but yeah. fortunately, I, I had a, I had, a, <coughs> I, had, a I, had man, I had, I had a couple of acro plot props, yes. stuck them in, and supported <laughs> it. But it was incredible, mm. and we put in a lot of new ideas. Yes. Um, what we did, we had, uh, because it, we had a lot of space and what's it, we had a row of shops, including a hairdressers and um, gifts and bits and pieces, oh, all right. for the youngsters. We had three dance <coughs> halls, right, and. Um, uh, we had what was called the snuggery, I which, can imagine. Um, yes. which it was. It wasn't. It, we were very strict because, yeah. I mean, just to give you an instance, um, this man came up to me one day mm. um, because you know it was packed to the seams. You have no idea how full it was. We used, we used to have literally, I can't remember how many, but hundreds and hundreds of youngsters there of a night. Really? In fact, the police really got very cross with us because we jammed up, jammed up the seafront with the <laughs> youngsters. Uh -huh. um, but this man came up to me mm. and he said, I want to shake you by the hand. He said, I'm a News of the World reporter. Oh, yes. And he said, I've been here a week. Trying to get masters. Uh, no. Well, I suppose so. yeah. that's what he wanted. Yeah. He said, I've been trying because we had half of it. At one end, we had the girls, yeah. 70 of them, and the other end, we had the 70 boys. Yeah. And um, they, he said, I've spent the whole week trying to get from the boys' side to the girls' side, and I've never succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> so that yes. Sunday, uh, we had a, a page of praise in the News of the World. Right. I've still well, got it. I've yes. got it, yes. Okay. I know, I've still got that. That, was, that was a rarity. That was a rarity, oh. that was. That was mm -hmm. very good. Yeah. But you see, this is the whole point. The mm. youngsters were very well behaved. We got the off-duty, there was all obviously troubles. Yes, oh, but, always but is. I got in touch with the, oh, I thought, well, who are the toughest people around here? Mm. And I thought, well, the military police. Yes. So I went and got the uh, military police and, and spoke to their commanding officer, yeah. and he let them come in their off-duty, you know. Mm. Uh, I think we paid them right. uh, to come as bouncers. Did you really? So we had off-duty military police <laughs> as bouncers. That's but, rare. But the <laughs> best bouncer of all, we had a little old lady, a 70-year-old lady, and she was on the ticket office. Yes. And, do you know, she could take with any trouble, any men, anything whatsoever. Oh. You have no idea. They, they were out on their ear in two seconds flat, just yeah. like that. Absolutely yeah. incredible. But we had our own, you, you remember the Cray Brothers yes. in London? We had our own version of the Cray Brothers down there. Yeah, a lot of the resorts tend to have. Uh, and I but know but, them from but, your family. Yeah. But um, I had a lot of trouble with them for a bit. And then I thought, well, I know what I'll do. And I took them over to the... They were two brothers, right. rather like the Cray yes, brothers. Yes, yes. <laughs> I took them over to the Priory and introduced them to the family and what's it, made a fuss of them. Right. And they were, they were so helpful after that, it was hardly true. You know, it just shows you that you can get through to the Even right thing. Yeah. But the interesting thing is that the thing has gone the full circle now. Because right. if you go to Butlins in Bognor, right. you will find they have got a shoreline club. 
All right. And so they have taken our name, which we started. It was one of my girls, um, D, I think, who, who named, gave the name the Shoreline Club. This was within the hotels? This was within, we had the Shoreline Club, ah. which did the night thing. Yes. We were the first people to have all night raves. We did, all night raves, we used to go on all night, and you'd come out in the first thing in the morning. Absolutely, oh lovely actually, it was all That's Absolutely, you've no yeah. idea. Yes. But, uh, well, but we, 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 had, we had yeah. no problems, yeah. you, unbelievable, you know, you'd yeah. think there'd be all sorts of problems, but we didn't, yeah. and um, uh, it, it's quite unbelievable. And we used to have three beat groups going, so you really? see the size of the thing, yeah. it, it, three beat groups in three different dance halls, through the building, wow. so it so shows shows there's five of them. Yeah. So people could go from one to the other, and um, it it was quite quite How amazing. How do you deal with, with incomers? I mean, I, I live near Plymouth, and um, if we had dances in, in in a village or a small town, we would tend to get the the bikers come out from Plymouth, and uh, at some point there would always be a confrontation between. A local lad and his girl and the outs and, and there would invariably be a fight of some sort. Well, we and, and and you didn't I can honestly problem. say we never oh, had any trouble with yeah. fights. I think uh, I think number one, mm. they were enjoying themselves. Yeah. And, and you yeah. see, we had all sorts of things which um, we, we were the first or we were at the cutting edge. Yeah. You see, we had televisions everywhere all through the place. Well, nobody nowadays. Everywhere you go, you'll see Pretty screens. Nice. But yeah. in those days, you never saw a television set. No. And we had these big screens up oh, right. showing the groups playing and what have you, uh -huh. and which was a new thing. Nobody Wouldn't else had very done new. it. Yeah. Very new. Very um, we, we were the first people, I think, or one of the first people, we had eat as much as you like. Oh, did you? Yes. And mind you, I hate to tell you, it was only baked beans on <laughs> toast and things Very like windy. that. Yes, but, I but, but, but I found that basically um, you'd get the one or two who'd pig and yes, do a lot, but well, you'd get uh, their offset by loads who, uh, you know, girls who are dieting and men who yeah, are dieting, sure. and so they do, don't yeah. eat a lot, and so it balanced itself out very well. So, where did the expertise of the video and television come from? Well, we, we just picked it up, I Is think, it? and we had the first video, we had the first video jukebox. Oh, yes. And yes. I, they've never come, they never took no, off, they never been. took off. No, there but are a few. the BBC um, was so impressed with this that they rang me up and said, could we send a camera down oh. and uh, spend the night with you for one of the all-night raves? And right. I said, yes, by all means, you yeah, know, very okay. happy, very happy for you to do that. And they sent it down, and this is where Mike Reed, his first time on television, because they said, I wonder if you've got somebody who can play the guitar, and, you know, yeah. a youngster can do it. So I said, yes, I've just got just the right man, Mike Reed. Okay. And, and so he played his guitar, and he said, I think he sang, Where Have All the Flowers Gone? Oh, yes, that was very, very, very popular in that very, day. Yes, so that, he was, that was his first television appearance. Really? And, and um, he, he's written... Did you get your agency? I never thought of such a thing. <laughs> but he's written a book, and, all right. and he's actually got all about it in, in his book. Well, that would be well so, worth so it. So there you go. Certainly if you live in Bognor, or even wider, or even if you're interested in better developments of the 60s that actually helped a lot of people, perhaps you should get a look at his book. Perhaps yeah. we should get a copy of it. Yes, we ought to. Yeah. But um, interestingly enough, uh, there was a lot of drug problems, but I for some reason or other, we never seemed to have any drug problem. Did you know? But whether I was completely unaware of it, that I don't well, know. Well, it was a secretive activity or whatever, but you tend to smell it in those days. Do you? It was was it? I don't know. Yes, I, I, was sort of I was very innocent, very yeah, innocent. If they were smoking, you would have known. Them yes, them, but our geek groups, one of the big things that Mike Reed still gives as one of his, his uh, standard jokes, if you like to put yes. it that way, he tells about the beat groups that we used to have who used to come down. We used to pay them £15 for the whole night. Yeah. And they'd play all night for £15. Unbelievable. But, but um, he, his story is, I, I can't remember it, so I take it he remembers yeah. it correctly. He, he said, well, Eric used to say to them, yes, um, you can sleep here with us as long as you make your bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, fair enough. And, and, and they'd say, yes, well, that's all right, no trouble. He said, and then when they'd get there, Eric would present them with a, a, a wood. wood and tools and what's in, say, there, make your bed. 
I don't remember no, it, but I, I, that uh, sounds a bit extreme. But we, we, we made some wonderful people. I mean, one of the beat groups, um, uh, the, I heard from the leader of it just mm. last week, in actual fact. Right. He's a manager of a hotel in Malta now. Oh, but right. this is one of the things. All our people seem to keep in touch. Yes, and they, it's they, lovely the way they do that. It was actually. Uh, I mean, I was um, clustered RF St. Maud's in Lynn, then Germany. But it was with that period. And it was sort of a, a, um, a very optimistic era. It, it was, was, it was yes. astounding. I mean, I came back from Germany on leave and the miniskirt had arrived. Oh, yes, the miniskirt. And, and I sat on the tube and I didn't know where to put my eyes. It was, <laughs> it was quite, because tights hadn't arrived. It was, oh, I it, see. It was an amazing sort of, because it hadn't hit Germany then, but it had hit UK. And yeah. I mean, UK was really driving on. And it was driven a lot by the teenagers who wanted something different. Well, know, that's right. And, uh, but all night raves. I mean, I, I don't look at you and think an all night raver. But I'm going to have to change my view. But, <laughs> but so the, the the council were continuing to be very supportive of the idea. Then. Well, they were supportive, but unfortunately, um, obviously, local people. Yes. They were coming. Youngsters were coming from all over the south of England. In fact, from all over England. I would imagine it and was and I mean, I remember I had a secretary. Uh, and she, anyway, teenage. It was all done by teenagers, yeah. and she came down from Scotland. Really? So it shows you how far <laughs> afield we were. We, we were drawing people in, and um, but it was it was a fascinating well, peri if, period. If you were in the news of the world, uh, with a complimentary bit, which is in itself is a yes. rarity, you were on BBC One. I take yes. well, the word. Oh yes. Channels, no. No. But, but, the, but the not a, the but not only that, but that mm. I, in fact I must get in touch with the BBC yes, because yes. Um, the their film of that night mm. won an award and it was sent all the way around the world, which was uh, unique in those days. Oh, so there absolutely. must be a copy of it somewhere well, we in the BBC it, archive. Uh, so we ought to get well, it. Should, it should be on Phoenix TV, shouldn't it? As, it, as it, the it, day it should be indeed. But I was telling you about this. Mm. Um, uh, thing unfortunately because there were so many youngsters the whole of the seafront was full with youngsters right. and of course residents don't like this sort of no, thing unfortunately no. there was no trouble there's no no bother they just didn't like but the they place. didn't like loads of youngsters coming from all over England to the shoreline club and Caribbean right. and um, so w one day I, I once again I told you about the news of the world reporter mm. Yes. One Saturday, and I remember the date, a Saturday, this man came in mm. and said he was from the Sunday Express. All right. And I said, I said, well, you, you're very welcome. Everything is open to you. Mm. He said, I hear there's been complaints about, you know, all the youngsters and so many youngsters. And he said, um, I said, well, you come in. Everything's open to you. Yes. You can stay and you, we provide you a bed even and you can stay here and see what it's like for yourself. Absolutely. Now, an hour later, mm -hmm. my assistant, he asked my assistant to take him back to the railway station. Oh, right. So he'd stayed an hour. And made up his mind. And made up his mind. Okay. And he hadn't, he hadn't investigated yeah. anything. And the next morning, it, it, it was the 6th of, 6th of June, I think it was, right. in, in 1966. So it's six, oh. six, six, six. So, so, yeah, so something uh, about that, wasn't it? Uh, there, on this Sunday, yeah. there came up these headlines on the Sunday Express. Um, seaside youth, what's it, faces drugs and sex charges. We've never faced a sex charge. We've never faced a drug charge. And it was, you know, a load oh. of nonsense. We, we, so I immediately closed the whole shooting match down because oh. I thought, well, I'm not going, that's going to attract oh. all the wrong sort of people. Yes, I shut the whole thing down straight away right. and sued the Sunday Express oh, and we won. Good man. Because, Good. you know, it was Sloppy wrong. Doing. It was wrong. It was oh, wrong. Damaging. And um, how are we doing for time? We're we're, doing okay. we're, we're, it's, a good, yeah. it's a good point to sort of come. Well, I come. think it is because it is Good Friday and folks have got a lot to be doing. They have. That's and right. They could be watching it after Good Friday. <laughs> but I, I think... Um, what you do identify there is that um, there are a lot of good ideas, people getting things underway, and just a real bad bit of sloppy journalism 
can destroy yes. uh, a lot of hopes yes, and aspirations yes. for a whole community of a, of a whole scheme. I mean, I must admit, we, we have, don't we, in our town, those who buy property on the seafront get a little annoyed that people come and visit us. <laughs> well, uh, it comes with the territory, doesn't it? It does, yeah, if, yeah. if you're going to go and put yourself beside the seaside, there are other people who have every right to be there, yeah. particularly in uh, today's world where yeah. the cost of protecting that seaside is so high, yeah. it's the person that's coming that's actually making <laughs> the biggest contribution to protect the well, people that's that right, live in yeah. there. So we do need to be perhaps a bit more sharing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I am quite disappointed that, that. So what sort of damages did you actually get from the newspaper? I can't remember. They, they printed a retraction. And, and I wasn't so much worried in the money. No. I, w I was interested in things. But it did rather uh, deflate destroy. me because yeah. I thought it's a terrible thing to destroy something which is worthwhile without... Uh, I wouldn't have minded if they'd have stayed... Done, done if the they job. Uh, yeah. See, if the news of the world could stay there for a week yes. and not find anything... I knew the Sunday Express couldn't find anything, yeah. so it just shows you. You see, if you'd had the power of the Sheikh of Abu Dhabi, they had, uh, and that was an Express report at yeah. the end, uh, through the Emirates, uh, spent, I think, about five days, mm. went off, and the next two weeks we had these appalling reports, which we couldn't read because the census censor had actually blocked them all out in the newspaper. So when you actually got that paper, it was all blocked out mm -hmm. by hand yeah. because it was such an appalling misrepresentation but, but of care. And, yeah. and that, it, it is damaging, but isn't before, it? It needs to be corrected. Yeah. But before we finish, yeah. I must say that there's nothing detrimental about the Sunday Express. No. I've, I've read the Sunday Express oh, all my right. life, I and I like the Sunday Express, and I yeah. still read the Sunday well, it Express, and it's a, it's, a lovely, it's a lovely paper, mm. so there's no fault on the d Sunday Express. It was this reporter didn't do yes. his job properly. This is what it boils but down to. But then he's, repo he's, a, he's a re um, reporting to an editor who sh himself should be exercised. Well, you know, they're very himself. busy. But oh, anyway. I'm sure they are. Yes. Anyway, Eric, that's got us. Into the clubs, into the drugs and rock and roll, <laughs> so it says, though it was completely, it would appear, unfounded. Look forward to seeing you the next time we pick up. I think it could be programme 14 or 15. We'll, we'll, we'll get it up to speed next time, but if you're on holiday, enjoy it, and if you're not, hope you did when you did have it. Bye-bye.